Uh, happy holidays, everyone. This is uh, this is the final Feel Good Friday episode of the. Uh, well, no, 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 that's not true. <laughs> happy holidays, everyone. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, we're right here. You know, Christmas is right here. If you celebrate Christmas, that's fun. You know, I had somebody. Uh, this is memory sticks out in my head. Had somebody. This is probably four or five years ago, maybe even longer. And this uh, uh, at the yoga studio, someone came in. This old woman came in to buy a gift card or something like that, and I sold her a gift card and she was leaving. And I said, "Merry Christmas!" or I said, "Happy Holidays!" And she turned around, she stopped, looked at me, paused, and said, "I say Merry Christmas." And I was like, "Oh, oh, oh!" oh. And I I went, "Okay, all right, sure, you can, cool, that's totally fine." (laughs) You can uh, turn around and say that. I say Happy Holidays, and I'm saying Happy Holidays (laughs) to everybody that's listening. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, This Feel Good Friday is setting you up for uh, for maybe possibly a stressful weekend. Yeah, Uh, dude. For some, always Uh, maybe maybe possibly a really enjoy a a joyous uh, and and raucous weekend. I mean, that's what it's going to be like for me. I love I love Christmas because it's just like drinking and eating and laughing with family. Um, but for some, it's not like that. So if you're coming into Christmas, you're feeling stressed out, we're here for you. We got you. And I got and the way I'm going to start this to help you out is I want to show all of you um, one of the best chainsaw fight scenes in any movie of all time. OK, uh, why did I show you that? Well, I only found out this week that chainsaws. Oh, which are made for murdering trees, and I'm sure a lot of people are using chainsaws during this time of year. I saw this. I saw this, and I chuckled to myself, but I never read the article. I think I know what. I think I also saw chainsaws were originally invented for helping with childbirth, not for cutting wood. I dude, how gnarly is that? Mini chainsaws. Well, uh, does this look like a mini chainsaw to you? Uh, Well, it's not. Doesn't really have a point of reference, so I actually can't tell. Well, I can guarantee you that that hand handle part you hold is not for baby hands so so (laughs) like you know it's it's kind of looks like a deal it doesn't look like a mini chainsaw to me by any by any means it looks pretty um i mean it looks hefty it does like like look like the handle could be like a vibrator and it does because there's like certainly like there's a part that could go in your butt and in your in your v anything shaped like that could be a sex toy um Mm -hmm. So very uh, phallic. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So chainsaws were originally invented to assist in childbirth. Uh, before the common use of the cesarean section, all babies had to be passed through the birth canal, which certainly makes sense. Um, but as we know, <laughs> babies can does. make uh, become obstructed if there are any uh, if they are breech or they are too large. And when babies couldn't fit through or they would get stuck in the pelvis, part of the bone and cartridge uh, were removed to create more space for the baby. This is called a Symphysiotomy, bone, 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 uh, bone of the of the mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Uh, the procedure was originally performed by hand using a small knife and a saw to remove the bone. Oh my god! Uh, this was all done without anesthesia oh uh, to a woman in the middle of giving childbirth. I, I can imagine that it would be <laughs> a messy and b painful and c uh, dangerous. All, especially the fact that the whole fucking thing. Anyway, chainsaws notwithstanding, yeah, are it is the most bananas <laughs> fucking yeah. thing that could ever happen. You, that you could what, ever see. What do you think the survival rate was low. of using this? Yeah, yeah. like well, well, what low. year? What year were they using this? Oh, seventeen hundreds. Like I'm talking low. You know what's yeah. crazy? Like, so like forty. So that looked like um, obviously they didn't have they weren't like powered by like an engine. Were they like crank powered chainsaws yeah, yeah. or were they like, how were, can that's you bring what, that picture back up? I think that's did, what the yeah, uh, small were, thing was. They were little, that's right. It was like hand cranked, <laughs> Whoa. Um, uh, which I don't know how that works. You had to have quick hands. Now we're, we're just getting to the beginning of this. So, so two doctors invented this chainsaw back in uh, uh, 1780 to make the removal of pelvic bone easier and less time consuming during childbirth. And it was powered by a hand crank that looked like a modern day kitchen knife with little teeth on a chainsaw that wound uh, that wound in an oval. Um, now, you know, this uh, it, it's obviously not going to like cut through the way that a modern day chainsaw is just going to rip through a oh, table God. and uh, shoe like we just saw there. Mm-hmm. in in that scene from the movie. Um, 
Uh, still, anything with the word chainsaw, knife saw, or blade coming at your downstairs is a completely conscious surgery. Uh, in a completely conscious surgery is terrifying. Here is the first surgical chainsaw used for those symphocytomies, um, which is, is that image right there. So the chainsaw was uh, soon used for other bone cutting operations and amputations in the surgical room. It then evolved into a woodwork, woodworking tool when people noticed how quickly and easily it was to get through, well, pretty much anything. Oh, man. Uh, it became larger and more powerful and eventually grew to the monster that we know today. A symphysiotomies. Sim- Symphysiotomies. Symphysiotomy? Sorry, is this, the, is this like the technical word for the tool? For, no, for the procedure. Oh, okay. Um, Symphysiotomies uh, are no longer performed, but sometimes still happen. Sci- it's probably otomy. Sciatomies. Symphysiotomies? Yeah, that's probably it. Symphysiotomies. Sciotomies. Um, they can sometimes still happen um, in, in other parts of the world. Um, where an operating room for a C-section is unavailable, but they are no longer being used. Like places here. like 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 um like Moncton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine, yeah. guys, that the that the doctors using those at the time had the most jacked forearms. Because could you imagine yeah. delivering a ton yeah. of babies? And like, I mean, they don't they're not doing C-sections at this time. So think about how many pregnancies have like have babies who are like spun upside down or twisted around and like i how, what what is the percentage like how many pr- pregnancies are they Dude, using rates, these in birth rates were low like like six like they were really low birth yeah uh what, what's the word i'm looking for like survival rates yeah. survival were, rates were low but were low. but but i mean there are a lot of births happening still yes of right? course so so imagine the doctor who's like got three deliveries in a day that's just cranking on that thing like they their forearms would be jacked. Yeah. You yeah. know what you know what surgeons' names were before we called them surgeons? Sawbones. Actually? That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Sawbones yeah. was the uh, was the technical term. <laughs> also the name of a really great podcast. Um yeah, so uh uh anyway, I read that and it just like made me it That's... all all I could think about were all the movies where chainsaws are um kind of a big part of the film. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh the film that we just saw right there, which I forget forget what the name is. Uh, Mandy, great chainsaw fight in Mandy with Nick Cage. Haven't seen it. Isn't it crazy how many there? Like even today, there are so many things in like m- the medical world that you're just like, we don't know, don't know how to do that, don't know how to fix that. Yeah, I think and like that- imagine back going back like 300 years. It's like and not knowing how to fix anything. I mean, you. I mean, you get sick. You you might not even go to the hospital because you're just like they don't have what yeah. I need. Well, it was it wasn't that long ago. We covered we covered a bunch of those like the 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 top ten weirdest like medical um, uh, interventions like from the past, and they were like you know. It's like, oh, you have a cold where you got to like take a dog, grind up its penis and, and like, Dude. chug it down yeah, it was, with, it some, was, like, <laughs> with like the tears of a beaver. It was and, literally spells. They were casting yeah, yeah, spells. Just, yeah. the, the other crazy thing is that the tools that they used were insane. Like those those vagina chainsaws and um, like drilling into people's heads for yeah, the trepanation. The trepanation. Um, but also there was no anesthesia, uh, no anesthetics, no. which is insane. That's a, like that's the crazy not part. only were the even... tools that they were using, not the most effective tools that uh, like effectively like the tools that we have today, but the people felt everything. And the whole time, insane. the whole time, the doctor's just smoking. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's crazy. <laughs> Into the wound. Crazy. <laughs> but like, actually, like yeah, actually, actually. <laughs> well, speaking of, uh, speaking of like things we don't know how to deal with yet. Um, alcoholics. Um, alcoholism, a lot of people have it. Uh, there's not really like a, like a treatment out there like that, that, you know, that, that just like works. Um, what was I listening to all the way through, but did we ever talk about this or are you? Well, well, I don't know. Uh, ketamine for alcoholics, uh, a trial for ketamine for alcoholics that goes, goes to its next stage over in the UK. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. There was some, there was something that it was, it was like a, it was like a repurposed, uh, not repurposed. I guess it was like an off-label use for some some like fairly common prescription medication that they had found. I can't remember where I heard this. It was it was like it was like a This American Life or something like in along those lines. It was like telling a really yeah. interesting story that everybody should know but nobody does. And it was something like, you know, there's this 
medic there's this prescription medication that can be used off label and there's it's been shown to 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 reduce the uh, to to um reduce the uh, the like the uh, urge to drink alcohol yeah or? like sort of um sort of like makes it like make like the the like alcohol will make you feel sick if you're taking the medication if like you have any alcohol right it will yeah, make yeah. you feel sick yeah. and then that what an awful way <laughs> and then like, that like a- makes you not that like rewires it's like something vile in your to brain. you, and, yeah. And, you're, and yeah. you just don't want. I can't remember anymore. what that is. Or I think where it was Radiolab. It might have been Radiolab. I feel like yeah. I, well, I heard that as well. Ketamine uh, hopefully would be a better option to that um, <laughs> because it just sounds so stupid to take something that makes you essentially allergic to it, and then you're addicted to it, and you want to have it, and then you're just puking and shitting yourself. Mm. Um, whereas ketamine yeah, probably wouldn't do it that way. way. Uh, the University of Exeter led trial with a funding of two point four million pounds. We'll go ahead at seven NHS sites across the UK. The trial will look into whether a combination of ketamine and therapy could help alcoholics stay sober for longer. Uh, Professor Celia Morgan, the academic behind the research, said there was an urgent need for new treatments. The research will go ahead after a phase two trial showed ketamine and therapy treatment was safe and tolerable for heavy drinkers. An earlier study found participants who had ketamine combined with therapy stayed completely sober representing 86% abstinence in their six month follow-up. What does ketamine do? Like it's, it's ketamine's a psychedelic, right? Um, it's, it's a, it's, it's a tranquilizer that has like psychoactive properties. I mean, yeah, it, like it, it taken at certain doses, it's extraordinarily. Psychedelic. I've always like, I, I mean, I can remember hearing about ketamine years and years and years ago, and it was always referred to as a horse tranquilizer. Yeah. But yeah. I think it's primary use is a heavy sedative. And yeah. then, uh, and then, then it has, you know, because it's, ha- it's a, but you'll, it's you'll a meet it, like you take enough, you'll meet aliens. Like you just meet an, another alien race, and <laughs> they talk to you and communicate. Like when you the put it that way, it sounds fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> well, I, I mean, it, I think it is used recreationally that way. It, it is, is yeah. yeah, it is. <laughs> and some people really enjoy going down what's called a ketamine hole, and it's uh, it's when you do so much ketamine that you. St- you meet those little creatures. <laughs> is, it, is it like Alice in Wonderland? Yeah, kind of, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I mean, f- probably for some. And I think for some, it's like Alice in Wonderland meets... Um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, <laughs> probably pretty scary. Um, uh, the Ketamine for Reduction of Alcohol Relapse Care oh, trial uh, will now move into the next step of drug development with the aim of rolling it out into the NHS uh, if it pr- proves effective. Uh, Professor Morgan from the University of Exeter said, quote, more than 2 million UK adults have serious alcohol problems, yet only one in five of those get treatment. 2 million, that sounds low, actually. Three out of four people who quit alcohol will be back drinking heavily after a year. Uh, She said alcohol-related harm was estimated to cost the NHS around 3.5 billion pounds every year and around 40 billion to the wider UK society. Man, um, it's it's such drinking such a part. I mean, it's a part of our, we're our culture. Right but um, but it, e- even there, like going to the local pub. Oh yeah, and having yeah. a pint. Like it's I just know, so. I, I normal, know we normalized. I know we know this. We know this. We know this subconsciously. But it was um, fuck. What was his name? He's from the UK. Uh, can't remember. Ali his name. G. Uh, no. <laughs> um, he he you, he worked for the i tried to get him on the show he never responded to uh to, to request to, to be on and he he I wonder why because this episode title is gonna be like chainsaws <laughs> ripping through baby like, ripping <laughs> through guts of pregnant women <laughs> um it was he he was on peter tia's podcast and he was talking about like the higher he he had come up with like a like an objective uh an objective ranking for uh drugs and oh yeah it was it, the 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 um, it was like shrooms. The algor- tier. The algorithm that he used to to <laughs> to do it was through ranking it by uh, harm to you as an individual using yeah. it and the harm that it does to society, and then taking those two things and and yeah. mixing them together. And alcohol was like far and away the worst because yeah. it like destroys you and it has such a profound impact on society. On this, on on it, like when somebody is affected by alcoholism, yeah. it ripples out. Like very far and, and the wide. very bottom of that list is LSD and mushrooms. Yes, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, alcohol. She said alcohol problems affect not only the the individual but families, friends, and communities. And related deaths have increased still further since the pandemic, which makes a lot of sense. Um, ketamine is a licensed medical drug widely used as an anesthetic in pain relief. Uh, it's also used as a rec- recreational drug and is classified as a Class B banned substance by the Home Office in the UK. Uh, the trial will recruit 280 people with alcohol problems who will be randomly split into two groups. 
Half will be given the ketamine at a dose used in the first cl clinical trial with uh, psychological therapy. The other half will be given a very low dose of ketamine and seven sessions of education package packaged around the harmful effects of alcohol. So both are getting ketamine, but some are getting like higher doses with therapy and the others low, low doses with like a pamphlet. Um, mm. Researchers will look at whether the ketamine and therapy package reduces harmful drinking. So that's, uh, that's interesting. I feel like this is one of those things that, you know, we've covered over the last couple of years where like we read this and then like in a year or two we get the update and it's always like, Ooh, cool. You yeah. know what I find yeah, interesting about, um, uh, trials that are using like illicit drugs, like, uh, ketamine, MDMA, yeah. uh, psilocybin. It, it's, it's interesting because the more you hear about these trials, the more you think like, Oh, well fuck the results seem like they would be profoundly positive for people to have easy access to those things. But the thing here, like here in Nova Scotia, I know is that in addition to the mental health system already being so difficult to navigate just to get like any form of help, it seems so confusing and difficult to find the path to access any of these sorts of treatments. Well, I think they're, it's because they're all wrapped up in trials. They're but like, not, how they're do not, you, I mean, I they're mean, not like, being offered like readily at clinics and stuff like that but, but even in some didn't um, didn't alberta just uh legalize psilocybin yeah they're for, like they're on the way to the but yeah. like there but how do you get i'm so curious about trials like how do you get involved with these well I, there's things? companies or there's like yeah. or probably not governments i think i think essentially as far as i know up until now they've all been private companies that are that are or, or 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 um like foundations or something that are doing or clinics that are running these trials they have to go through a lot of hoops to try and get the trial approved by health canada to be able to like legally run it if it's like if it's like psilocybin or whatever that is a, uh, an illegal substance so there's like a ton of hoops to jump through there and then and then you've got to do the trial and the trial can only be small with with you know not very many people and then th that has to basically show some type of efficacy to warrant a, a bigger trial and they basically have to do that like three or four times yeah. mm -hmm. and scale up every time. But like in terms of like, how does one get involved in a trial? If it's something that they're like interested in, um, you know, like I, I've been a part of a couple of CF trials over the years and it's just based on the fact that like my clinic is one of the clinics taking part in the trial. Mm -hmm. They put the feelers out to patients that are interested and then you can like say whether or not you want to be a part of it. So for this type of thing, it's likely that, you know, these 280 people or whatever the number was, um, they are they are finding those people at clinics where people are showing up going, hey, I have alcoholism. Yeah. I need help. Mm -hmm. And they go, OK, cool. By the way, we're doing this trial. Would you be interested in joining? And they probably, they, you know, they would fill that shit up pretty quickly, yeah. I would guess. Yeah, yeah it's for just sure. be a pool of people that are. They know are exposed. We need to like a issue. we need like a Tinder app for trials. Totally, yeah. You know, something like that would be really cool. Like swipe, it, it's just all swipe based. I think about it too because um, with a cool like <laughs> photo, yeah, for each trial, that really <laughs> entices you to just sign up for as many as humanly possible. Yeah. And, and you, you for this pay, one, it's like it. it's like a person holding a like a bottle of JD and then holding like a little baggie of ketamine and and like and they're looking up and like above them, like in their thought bubble, there's just like little alien critters talking to each other. And it's like <laughs> cool. Academy for alcoholics. No, it's funny. I watched, um, uh, the Christmas movie spirited. Uh, I also watched recently. it. It, it Jared, do you know about it? Oh, no, I don't think it's, I know. Uh, it's Ryan, Reynolds Ryan Reynolds and, and, Reynolds and, Will, and Will Ferrell. And, uh, and <laughs> it's, it's basically a retelling of a Christmas Carol. Yeah. Right. It's the, fun. The Christmas Carol. Like, is it the Christmas Carol? It's a, yeah. Christmas, a Christmas Carol. Carol. Yeah. A Christmas Carol. So, um, I, I imagine that that type of experience for somebody who, who is like an alcoholic who who like had the ability to like see into their future when it was like, this is you continuing down the path that you're on. A Christmas Carol <laughs> basically is. Right. Yeah, it is. It's like that, psychedelic. Right? It's like psycho psychedelic psychotherapy. Right. For, 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 for people who are addicted to yeah. something that it's they'd like, like to not be addicted to. Here's your life. It, like the ghost of 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 alcoholics future is uh yeah. or what is future yeah yeah would be like would be like here's your life and your family f f is affected this way and society yeah. is affected this way and 
Here's what you can do. Like, I mean, do these psychedelics. So, I mean, that could be. I don't think necessarily. I mean, ju- I'm just basing off my experience specifically with psilocybin. But I don't think that you would re- really necessarily have that type of experience. But like, you might, and it might scare somebody straight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ibogaine is another one that's uh, that been proven to show like mm-hmm. helping with folks with addictions. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. Hey, uh, Barai, this one's for you specifically. Uh, yeah. Super curious about where you think about this cool twin content that we got coming <laughs> at you. Guys, how many twin stories did we Dude, cover in 2022? I, said, I mean, 2022 <laughs> was the year of birth and twin. <laughs> I sent this to Jerry this I sent this to Jerry this morning and I said twin content is back. Yeah, it is. Uh, identical <laughs> college twins were accused of cheating in an exam by signaling. They won 1.5 million in damages after a jury decided they hadn't cheated because their minds were connected. Now, whoa. Interested to see what Dude, you think you're real. Brad. This is real. This is very interesting. So in the fall of 2016, identical twins, Kayla and Kelly Bingham, uh, who were studying at the Medical University of South Carolina, walked into their favorite hangout spot in the college town of Charleston. They saw that a large number of their fellow students were there. And Kayla told Insider, where this is, article is coming from, that the students stared and nudged at each other. She said, quote, it happened wherever we went, Kayla said. People would gossip about us and we got a cold reception. It got to the point where we had to order delivery because we couldn't go to restaurants anymore. The sisters had been ostracized because MUSC had labeled them cheats. The medical school had claimed that the, uh, the similar scores they would got in an important exam were more than just a coincidence. She said, it was devastating, Kelly said of the a- accusations. We both knew that we'd done nothing wrong. The twins had finally cleared their names after six years of torment. Uh, They won their defamation defamation case against MUSC last month. The jury awarded them damages totaling 1.5 million. Did they like get an automatic uh, medical degree as well? They ended up uh, not becoming med students and they both became lawyers. Oh, oh, that's that's interesting. The sister's ordeal began after they took the exam in May 2016. Kelly said that the twins were assigned seats at the same table. She said, quote, we were about four feet apart. Uh, but they couldn't see each other because their monitors blocked their views. Okay. Two weeks later, the faculty formally accused them of cheating. My mind was racing, Kayla said, having to appear before the honor board. Uh, I was sobbing and uh, incredulous that this was happening to us. She went on, there's no way to process your emotions when you're accused of something you didn't do, Kelly said, that despite the trauma, she thought the school would withdraw the claims. Kelly told the council that their answers had been highly similar since first grade. She said they, uh, they'd graded within a fraction of a point of one another at high school. Their SAT scores had been identical. Cheaters. <laughs> they'd received the same scores when they'd taken tests on different days and in different locations. Okay, okay. <laughs> the council told the sisters that a professor raised the alarm after monitoring the results of the whole class remotely. He suspected the twins had been collaborating in cahoots, one might say. He had told a proctor to, quote, keep an extra eye on them as the exam continued. The proctor reported that she'd noticed that the Binghams had repeatedly nodded their heads as if they were exchanging signals. She said that one had pushed back her chair. Ah. She said that one had flipped a sheet of paper on the table so that the other could see it. Ooh. <clears throat> Big claims. The woman, uh, who were 24 at the time, protested their innocence. They said, we were just nodding at our questions on our computer screens. Kayla said, there was no signaling, she said, adding that they never even looked at each other. They were just looking at the computer screens going, "Mm -hmm." (laughs) (laughs) mm-hmm. Yes. Um, She told Insider that people had often commented on their uh, incredibly similar mannerisms. You know, they're like those twins that like... Cringe twins. Cringe twins. Yeah. Yeah. So... So, uh, Wait 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 wait. wait, wait. <laughs> 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 uh, fuck off. I, I want to know. I can't even do this. <laughs> <laughs> They're those kinds of twins, you know. I want to. I want to know. Like the really cute ones. <laughs> so, so what are you guys? Annoying. What are you guys thinking at this point? In well, hold terms on. Of like, hold on. Let, no, let me get a little further I, into it. I want before I you read go it further. Morning, I read it this morning. Okay, I was curious, like what, like. It, like in the Taylor, middle of the article, like what do you? Th- well, what here you let, let me just say this for our own asses: a trial of their peers, <clears throat> um, a jury of their peers, rather, have come to the decision that these girls did not cheat. 
now. Which you is can fucking, have your own opinion. I said that. Which is crazy. Yeah. My own personal opinion is that there's something a little bit fishy here, but let me get a little deeper into this so that you can understand why I think it's fishy. At this point, I'm like Brian's- strongly on the twin side. Oh, you are? Really? Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. This is great. This is great. Oh, this wow. is what I wanted. This is what I yeah. read this and I went, oh, Brian's going to just smell dog shit. Good. On no, cool. Brian's a twin. No, dude, these are Brian's real twin. twins. Yeah. These are, yeah, yeah. These are, and they're, these will, they're identical. Right, exactly. They're real, they're right. real twins. <laughs> Now, Another level, dude. <laughs> they, Kayla said, I never anticipated that nodding at your computer screen could be used against you. And confirmation bias is given when you're showing regular and familiar behaviors at an exam. Kayla told the council that the cheating claim was ridiculous. She told Insider that the sisters, the sisters had no twin telepathy or secret language, she added. We don't feel each other's pain or anything like that. Now, is that true with twins, Bray? True, yeah. All right. But the twins were found uh, guilty. They appealed to the dean and were cleared of the charge after an excruciating week-long wait. Quote, we had thought it had gone away, Kelly said, noting that they'd, quote, worked really hard and, quote, wanted to get back to their studies. But the damage was done and word leaked out. <sighs> oh, so so they so they were... They, they let, said they that they go. were guilty. They let it go. They said they were guilty. Then the, then the school takes it back. The school said they were guilty. And then and then they protested, and then the school was like, "All right, fine." We're and gonna, then, we're but then everybody alone. was like, "Look at those cheating motherfuckers!" <laughs> yes, <laughs> I don't yeah. get it. who would be s- sitting around saying that about dude med somebody. students. Yeah, it's it's highly com- dude, competitive. But, but med, if you were like, "Hey, students, yeah. we didn't," and also the dean was like, "They didn't," and it, and it was a mistake. Damage was done, dude. She said these yeah. mutterings and rumors came throughout campus uh, about how we've been academically academically dishonest. Uh, there was gossip and uh, recrimination. Their peers targeted them on social media and, discuss- and discussed them on community blogs. Media outlets reported on the case in states as far away as California. Now it's getting everywhere. Their, their whole reputation is just in the fucking shitter now. <laughs> the sisters told Insider that the other students uh, universally shunned them. They said that people refused to talk to them, including a friend they'd known for a decade, who obviously wasn't a triplet. <laughs> who um, obviously wasn't. Their real friend then. Uh, too, in that they case. said they were uninvited mm-hmm. from two weddings. Uh, one bride to be sent them a. This is way too far reaching. Generic sounding email. <laughs> one bride sent them a generic sounding email. Another who had sent them a save the date card never followed up. They said we'd been two of the most social individuals on campus, knowing everyone in our medical school class as well as other classes. We didn't sleep. We lost weight. We gained weight. We lost weight. Uh, they withdrew from MSC, MUSC in September 2016. Kayla said that they left, quote, at the recommendation of the dean because of how hostile it had become. Kelly said that she was shattered when they were forced to abandon their medical career. Quote, it honestly killed me, Kelly added. I dreamed about being a doctor since I was little. Kayla and I wanted to help people. They filed their lawsuit against the school in 2017. Uh, they said, we knew the truth. We weren't going to roll over and let our re- reputation be ruined. She went on, the first and foremost thing was to clear our name. You take an entire lifetime to build a reputation, she said. The sisters became even closer. They started talking to each other using only their minds. So this, <laughs> so, so this basically spurred their ability for tele- telepathy. They said, we relied on each other, Kayla said. We, became, we came together with a decision to fight, and we did. They decided to forego their medical ambitions and attended law school. They had very similar GPAs when they graduated last year. Probably fucking cheated on those tests. You know what I mean? um, they work at the same law firm and want to tackle complex defamation suits like their own. <coughs> we did not want anyone to have to go through what we had been through ever again. Kayla, now 31, said, uh, quote, we switched paths so that we could at least try to ensure that people don't have to endure what we did. The case took five years to come to trial in Charleston. The sisters' lawyer represent, uh, presented the records of education to the jury. They showed how they'd obtain identical or near-identical scores in the exams that had taken place in the past. A professor at their college before law school wrote in their defense. He said in a letter that they'd submitted the exact same answers, some right, some wrong, for an exam that he supervised in 2012. Uh, they'd been sitting at, oppos- at opposite ends of the room, the professor wrote. And he said that it would have been impossible for them to collaborate. So in another test, they they basically had the exact same scores, same answers right, same answers wrong. Okay. Yeah. 
I'm Nancy's, gonna bring up. Are you reading? The, are you reading this one from Insider? No, uh, yes, this, yes, but not I, the one that I sent you. No, no, okay. but I have I have some stuff from that from that article. So Nancy Siegel, uh, a mm -hmm. psychologist who specializes in behavioral genetics and the study of twins, testified in court. I have so many thoughts on this, by the way. She, I'm just I'm, I'm just sure you do. waiting to see she, where this goes. Yeah, she said that she would only have been surprised if the sisters had quote not ended up with the same scores. So she's going. I fully believe these girls. Yeah. The professor who founded the Twin Study Center at California State University, Felt Fullerton, told the jury about the very quote, close intertwining of twins. She said that cheating complaints against twins are common in academia. Uh, quote, they are genetically predisposed to behave the same way, Siegel said. They've been raised the same and are, natu and are natural partners in the same environment. She told Insider that twins, particularly identical twins, are likely to have similar talents, tastes, social pre preferences, and academic achievements. So this, like, this is part of what's contributing to my way of thinking. However, um, one thing that I find interesting about that is that I think that is true for a lot of identical twins. I think there's a spectrum of, it, of identical twins in terms of like how similar they are based on um, the sort of social bubbles that they've lived in, their experiences from their past. You know, the, there's a lot of identical twins who are like who are inseparable growing up and and like have the same yeah. friend group and do the same sports. Well, it's like those three boys, like, those triplets that were separated for, from that really fucking awful unethical right. trial it, uh, at that that orphanage in in New York. Mm -hmm. And when they came together in their adulthood, when they each of these triplets found each other, there's a uh, documentary about that, right? Yes. Um. They they basically the the trial we we talked about it once, but the trial was that they took. And this they have they did this with tons of tri triplets and twins, orphan twins or triplets. Uh, this this orphanage specifically for this like scientific experiment unethically split the kids up when they mm. were babies and gave them to um, families with like opposing uh, like affluence based backgrounds. So like a rich family, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, a middle class family and a, and a poor family. And these triplets found each other when they were adults. They came, they, they somehow like managed to find out uh, just through happenstance. And when they came together, they were like, holy fuck, we're the same dudes. We got mm -hmm. identical SAT we, we, scores. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, so the yeah. interesting thing is that, is that I think that, so I think that there are some core components to identical twins based on genetics that will like, are just embedded in the way that they are, that they'll share these, these sort of like similar traits when they grow up. But also, um, their experiences in the way they grow up also greatly influences that. And if they share the same experiences, then they'll be more similar in those right. ways. And if they if they have a lot of like my parents were really, I think they wanted Dennis and I to have um, individual personalities. So like at grade one, we then went to separate classes. Um, we always had Ooh, like different, um, not different friend groups. Like we had the same friend group, but like. We would have different friends. Um, we played. We even played different sports. Like Dennis was more of a hockey player. I played more soccer, um, and Dennis played baseball. and And so we had like a lot of different experiences. But the interesting thing is that um, I remember when I was living in Dubai and Dennis was coming to visit. He showed up at the airport, and we were wearing basically the exact same thing. Yeah, like we were both wearing a black t shirt with no logo, plain black t shirt. And, Khaki and pants. maroon, maroon, maroon colored shorts. There's almost no um, way you could have lined which are it up. like sweatpants shorts <laughs> that were different brands, but like almost the exact same yeah. thing. And this yeah, is happening. Brown shirt, yeah. black pants, <laughs> yeah. purple socks. It's, it's like just bad taste. The, the, the interesting thing is that like even now, like um, when I see Dennis after being apart from him for a, a really long time, like our wardrobes are mostly the same. Like we buy tend to like have a propensity Functional to buy clothes. similar clothing and things like that. Lots of pockets. And so there are like things that, that are probably from our experiences growing up uh, sort of lead us to making decisions in a similar way, which like I can totally identify that if you are in the same program and you know, have always been this close to your identical twin, then I could very easily see how okay, this would be. So, so hold on, hold on. Here's, here's what makes this really interesting, right? So, now, I again, also think they could be cheating. I mean, they, but they, sure, like, I mean, for like, sure they, they could be. They, they, they absolutely could have. They didn't, um, <laughs> but they could have. Um, now, but when you get into the math of the of the odds, the chances of them pulling this off, 
or the chances of this happening without them cheating, it's really staggering. So I, I want it like even with you saying that before you go into the odds, <laughs> um, the thing that I think that is is immediately I, I find it hard to believe the odds are against us in the sense that they would have studied together. They right, would have done right, right, everything right. leading but, up. But hold so on. Like, what, like I just wait till you hear this number. OK, out of out of 307 questions. OK, they gave the same answer. 296 times, including the 54 times they were, they gave the same wrong answer. Okay. What do you think the odds are, the probability that they took the test independently, but got the exact same questions answered the same, the, the way that they did? Like, you know, uh, one in what? One in. Oh, well, I mean, it's like knowing that the. Knowing the statistics of that, it's like one in like three hundred trillion or something that that it's, it would be that many combinations it, yeah, of those it's, numbers. It's even more. It's like that. It's, it's like a hundred hundred trillion. More yeah, than it's that. one in one hundred undecillion. Uh, undecillion right. is one with thirty six zeros after. But it. but the thing that's that's totally irrelevant. Now that's about if they that weren't is twins. Is is, is <laughs> but, that's but, if they weren't no, twins? But it's not happened? even twins. It's like you. So say we all the three of us study together for a test that we know nothing about. And there's only t 10 questions. Yeah. And the 10 questions are totally random subject matter. We study the exact same things. And the three of us take, take that test. And we've studied like our only knowledge is based on the three of us studying that together. Then the odds that we answer the same on the questions is probably fairly high. Yes. But, it, but once you go beyond 10 questions and it becomes 350 questions, then the odds diverge greatly. But the there. thing is, is that the thing that's misleading about that, and I understand statistically the odds of that. However, the the topic isn't like the the thing that's being left out of that is that that subject is actually broken down into sections where you're answering questions based on your understanding of certain subject matter. So yeah. like I, the I, 54 I, questions that you get wrong could be there were 12 questions in a row about yeah I see that you know, I see whatever. The I see your argument here, which is like if we studied together, right? That makes sense. I think not just study together, live together. Yeah, your sure, experience sure, sure, was the sure. fucking Regardless, exact same. Let's let's not yeah. even go that far. So yeah. like the three of us have our separate lives. We study exactly. We study together. Like we just have the same study group every fucking week to prep for this test, and we know each other. I don't think the odds would be as high as it is. I, I feel like these odds. So again, and and these odds were were brought to the case by the um, by the. Uh, prosecutor, yeah, right. So they were saying basically, it's impossible. Um, like if yeah. if you took two random people and you had them have a test, the an examination <laughs> company concluded that the probability the twins took the test independently was one in uh, one in one hundred undecillion. Um, with ten to the thirty six power, ten to the, the, to the power of thirty six. But here's the different. Here's here's the defense. The, these calculations are totally off because they didn't take into account that the the fact that the students were identical twins. So identical twins are clones of one another. Uh, with 100% of their DNA in common. So shouldn't we expect them to have vastly more similar to one another than the average person? In fact, shouldn't, expect them to, shouldn't we expect them to, for all intents and purpose, purposes, have the ex be the exact same person? To back this up, the twins lawyers brought in, like I said, Professor Nancy Siegel, who was a well-known uh, behavior, behavior geneticist. Um, in her disposition, Siegel didn't quite argue that the twins' minds were connected, but she made the case that the twins are so similar that she would be surprised if she didn't see similarities on the exam. Once people are familiar with what the research shows and everybody knows that twins do amazing things alike, which really defines the imagination. But once they understand that the intelligent and more reasonable individuals understand that twin similarities are a function of their genetic uh, propensities and not a function of cheating. So they, they were taking these numbers and the defense came back um, and they, they tried to make a correction. So they took the, the, the number one in 10 to the power of 38 and corrected it for the similarity of the twin of the twins. Um, and if they argued that the twins are twice as similar as the average person, the numbers would be divided by two, giving them one in 10 to the power of 19, which is still fucking massive. Right. But what if the twins were 10 times more similar than the average person? So this is where it gets really interesting because you're going, when you we have twins that are we don't, we don't yeah, know how, how do we, we don't, how do we know right twins are compared yeah. to the so, average so let, random two people so let's say it's 10 times more <laughs> similar than the average person um, that would translate to one in the, the odds would translate to one in 6309 a lot slimmer odds but also still yeah pretty wild odds 
Like if I bought a if I bought a a, a fifty fifty ticket, with the odds being one in six thousand three hundred nine, you're not, you're gonna. I'd lose. be checking my ticket, but I wouldn't be sitting there going, oh, oh, "Here we yeah, go, yeah, here we you, go." You, you know, it's like expecting to win. No, no, you win. You go, "Holy fuck! How the fuck did I do that?" Um, so how sim- How much more similar? How much more similar than the average person subjectively? How much more similar are you and Dennis to like two random people to me paired, and paired together? I don't. Yeah. I don't. I find it hard to think about it that way in terms of this story in this situation, because I would ask how much more similar is your experience in studying for the test than two random people studying sure. for the test. But regardless, but regardless, like that, this is the part that I find so interesting. It's, and, and this isn't what has, this is the, the result of this trial didn't, isn't going to lead to, maybe it will, maybe it'll, there, it, will, so- it will lead to a study, but like how, cool would it be for us to to like get to the bottom well, that would be very interesting of how similar twins are you know well, thing, like, mathematically we can know <clears throat> we mathematically we can know because we can look at the dna dna and say how so my dna and dennis's dna are exact replicates of one another so like my dna and your guys's dna how what is the percentage of dna that we share in common right. yeah but yeah, that's right. but that's not telling the whole story either because it's also then how that dna then manifests in the real world and its experience and all that sure, stuff but that's my what, point. But what I think is very, what I think illustrates how interesting this is, which I think lends itself to the, um, to the defense being the school that is accusing them of cheating, is you are, are also have to take in, into consideration, of course, that they are twins and that that is a very unique experience of being a twin and all the things that you highlighted, Bri. But you're also in a medical school class. You are basically in a pool of people that have a that all share a very similar drive for high academic achievement for understanding how to study for something and so like why aren't you seeing that they might not be as similar as twins but two people in medical school medical school are also going to be much more similar than two random people plucked out of a crowd mm. because they share a lot of things in common that have brought them to the class in which they are taking an exam See, for medical I, school so I think- would you not? So why aren't we seeing very similar scores across the board? Because we're they're all sort of in this similar pool. Maybe no. uh, maybe more divergence, of course, than twins. Do you know? Do you I, 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 do I you, disagree because there are so many exogenous factors that influence the way that you are as a person. Yeah. That just your the fact that you're in medical school is is such a small aspect of of who you, who are, you are as a person. Yeah. I would say, and like to like pull a, a an arbitrary number. I've, I've been trying to be like fairly objective about this because obviously I have biases in this situation. But um, to to like you know pull out of uh, an arbitrary number out of my head, I'd say twins are more than a hundred times yeah. m- more similar than yeah. to how close were you and Dennis students. in in your grades and stuff coming up? Um, I would say closer when we were younger, but then as our experiences differed and we you know, had more unique experiences. Yeah. They, they changed, but like our, our report cards at the end of the year were very, like almost mirror images. Of do you one think, another. do you think if like one of you guys got circumcised and one of you didn't, that it would like, it would just like greatly, greatly change, change who we are. Chain, yeah. Yeah. Like chain yeah. effect of just going off in two completely different. Yeah. That's one of us. And I are so different. If, yeah. if one of us was yeah. circumcised, then <laughs> we'd live with a lot of shame. Um, hey, hey, hey! Whoa, whoa, <laughs> for the rest whoa, of our whoa, lives, whoa, whoa, <laughs> we, like a lot we of like what? Like, like we've dealt with shame. We well, yeah, I mean, we've dealt with um, like sexual mutilation of our body parts. Right. So we would we would feel hey, there'd be a lot of trauma. Hey, Dave, that. Dave, <laughs> we're brothers. <laughs> we're brothers. <laughs> um. Uh. Anyway, yeah, really interesting story. I love that. I love that like weird, wild twin shit. And if anybody comes ac- across any of that stuff, info <laughs> at sickboypodcast dot send it to us. Well, at 2023, it's just going to be can, all twins. Can I, can I add one more thing to that? Yeah. So say these twins had photographic memories. And I mean, they're, they're high achieving students. They're in med school. Yeah. And they had photographic memories. Say they made cue cards for studying and they actually just made errors when they're yeah. transcribing stuff yeah. onto cue cards. And so they were. They could have they were gotten a perfect exactly. score. I mean, they well, maybe they could have, but they both got exactly they the same wrong because the in the studying they were studying yeah. the wrong information. Yeah, do we know that? Like, yeah. obviously, we don't know. I mean, to be to be fair, 
that seems like a far out idea to think of it that way. However, it's also probably more common than one to the whatever billion factor. Ten to the power, ten to the power of exidillion, yeah. whatever. Undecillion. Undecillion. <laughs> it's probably heard, more likely heard, that that would happen. I never heard than, that number until yeah, today. And, and I'm and I I'm not certain on this, but I think that number is like if you were putting that into kilometers, that's farther than from here to the end of the universe, the known universe. Yeah. yeah. I uh which seems not kilometers insane. <laughs> light years. Oh sorry. Uh no. No, no. You think kilometer no. you th- how many kilometers is the end of the universe? A billion light years. Oh no, you're probably right. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. There's probably like No, it probably is kilometers. Probably ten t- like ten un- undecillion to the power of t- thirty well, we undecillion. Well we can do that math. You just have to figure out how many how many kilometers does light travel in a year and then times that by fourteen billion and then you've got the number. Yeah, let's not do uh let's not make this a math podcast. Okay. <laughs> um <laughs> I'm uh, curious though. <laughs> of course you are. Well, this will make you curious. What do you think these Celebs, up, John? Have in common with one another. So, uh, what? Just name off Marilyn Monroe. Celeb- the okay, hold on, just hold on. Who, wait, who is for that? That that's just, John F. Kennedy. For people that are just listening at home who don't see this, uh, that is John F. Kennedy. Okay, and uh, who do we got uh, here? That's uh, Brittany uh, Murphy. Brittany Murphy. That's right. fucking gonna, black mold. I'm gonna suck at this okay. game. <laughs> uh, who's this? That's Diana, Princess, Princess Di. Princess Diana. Di. Yeah. Michael MJ? Jackson. Yeah. MJ. MJ? Elvis. Elvis Presley. All right. What do all of those folks have in common, do you think? Uh, uh, they're all friends with Julia Samuel. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> That's really uh, they are all dead, um, but they share okay. something else in common. Wait, I was like, well, yeah. I mean, that was the one I wasn't going to point out. <laughs> yeah. So they're all dead, <clears throat> but they also have something else in common, which is called. It's not black mold. No. Okay. It's called Sampaku. It's called what? Is it a secret society? No. <laughs> what do you think Senpaku is? A uh, a, a secret organization that uh, uh, that, no that meets underneath a pizza shop. No, okay. yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that sounds dark. Uh, it is. They dark. have they have perfect pitch. Senpaku. Uh, no, but uh, you're kind of you're. I mean, you're somewhat closer than the pizza shop thing. <laughs> well, <I> so mean. <laughs> uh, Senpaku, also known as Senpaku Eyes. Is, uh, is a Japanese superstition. So what is the meaning? Um, it's a curse. <laughs> uh, it's a superstition. And one of us could have Senpaku eyes. Do we? Do you know? Well, that? I don't know. Let's look. So, well, here, let me is describe. Is it an eye shape? I will show you. Uh, here's an example of Senpaku eyes. So Senpaku eyes or Senpaku gan. Those all look, those are three totally different eyes. They are. Um, is a Japanese term meaning three whites. Um, and it's it's far less um, problematic than it sounds. Uh, <laughs> this expression applies to those people where <laughs> the whites of the eye can be seen at the top or bottom of the iris, even if the person is staring straight ahead. So you can see on that far left. Sorry, can you say that again? Uh, I, I actually like because because I was just looking into. I was just trying to figure out whether Zaya had a strabismus. Yeah, and I was looking into like her yes. her, her what's called her epicanthal fold, which yeah, is don't a, say sebaceous sebaceous stri- stri- and, stri- and definitely don't say epicanthal <laughs> fold. <laughs> so so you looking, look like I now that I'm noticing you look like you have a strabismus. No, like I you, don't. Like you, I mean, like you may have when you were a kid, and then it stretched out. Well, yeah, I think I'm, I think a lot of kids. I mean, it's like super common. Yeah, you're that's a what child. I mean. I wasn't insulting. So you, I wasn't you, like, so you, dude, he really took offense to that. <laughs> he so, did, so, didn't so he? He got real fucking sensitive. Well, because that because you at first it made it sound like you you think that I look cross-eyed. No, I don't think you. Do. <laughs> no, no, he's he's no. just saying that he. Not thinks there's anything wrong with that. Zaya looks. It's like just you. not me. Uh, yeah. But so I was looking at. I, I this like led me down. A I'll never hole. see him de- the same again. I, I can't not see it now. <laughs> I know, me too. Whenever I look at him, like, I'm just like, ew. <laughs> and I didn't think cross eyed until he said yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, right can't now, I can't get it. Yeah. So when I was when I when I was looking into this, it Sorry, led. I have it, no idea what you're saying. <laughs> I, I just I'm so lost in your. <laughs> what was it called? It led <laughs> strabismus. Yeah, your strabismus. It's a pseudo strabismus. It's not really there, but you see it. What is a strabismus? It's where one eye strays inward, or outward, but most commonly inward. And so when I was looking into this, it, it like led me down the, this rabbit hole of like all the different eye shapes and like common eye shapes amongst like different ethnicities. And yeah. like when you see a, when you see like an abnormality within an eth- ethnicity where like an eye shape is expected, but then it's, it's something else. And, yeah. it, and so I was a lot about like whether you can see the, eye, the, 
the whites around all of the yeah. eye are just on the right or just right. on the left or all that so, stuff. So, <clears throat> senpaku gone uh, are Japanese terms meaning three whites. This expression applies to those people where the whites of the eye can be seen at the top or bottom of the iris, even when the person is staring straight ahead. So, um, so like, look at me directly. So it doesn't you, seem that you have senpaku. Maybe, sen, uh, maybe the bottom senpaku. looks. Sorry, can you, can, you say, can you say it again? So you can, you, see, can't see? you can see the white. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Either you see above the white or below of the, the iris. iris. Below or above right. the iris. Yeah. I, yeah, I can't see. Or you, sometimes both. Yeah, you don't have right. it at all. I don't have it. You I don't can't. have it. Good. Okay, this is good. No, you yeah. don't have it. It's really good that we don't have this. Okay. Because we're going to die early. Light. We're going to lo- live long lives. All those people died. Dude, you didn't even young. need you didn't even need trichafta. Piecing it together, you're starting to get it. You're starting to see it. So the but person they died from a lot of them died from freak a- accidents or a- issue. That's exactly. right. They're cursed because they had senpaku. Uh, the person can have both eyes with this characteristic, or only one eye with them. Apparently, it's just a normal character characteristic of someone. But for the Japanese, there's a lot of superstition aimed at. The Senpaku eye. Can you show me the eyes again now that I know what sure. I'm looking for? So the eye on the far left, you can see, you can just see a little bit of the whites on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, 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 and actually all three of them, you can see it on the bottom, right? You're pretty close, Taylor. He is, he's close on his, on his right eye, right? You are, yeah. Like, yeah. I get that checked, Taylor. But you're supposed to see it on the top and bottom? No, just the bottom. Either, well, or. either or. Oh. Yeah. One oh. eye, both eyes. Either or, it doesn't matter. And if you can see it, it's bad news in Japan. Can you see mine? No. No. Maybe um, a little bit on your right eye. Well, I mean, when you do that, yeah. <laughs> so the person can have both eyes with this characteristic or just one of them. And apparently it's just a normal characteristic of someone. But for the Japanese, there's a lot of superstition aimed at the Senpaku eye. And for them to have eyes like that can negatively interfere with the person's destiny. This is also believed to demonstrate a certain physical and mental imbalance to traditional Japanese medicine. Although they can affect the behavior and personality of those who have Senpaku eyes. Do you think that this would be something that would be that would like really stick out in like an Asian culture just because their eyes have a completely different shape? So like seeing the eye, seeing the seeing the white would be just like, oh, there'd be a way, a way smaller chance, like way fewer people. Uh, no, not technically. There are a lot of uh, a lot of uh, Japanese pop stars have senpaku eyes. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter where you're from. Anybody, anybody can have it. And I have an example of a bunch of people that have it. Uh, but before I do, Senpaku Theory. In 1965, Osho, uh, o, uh, Osawa published the book entitled You Are All Senpaku. Uh, but it was in the 90s that people became aware of the subject. George Osawa became popular for talking about microbiotics and the expression of Senpaku in the West. For those with this condition, he recommended diets rich in whole grains, vegetables, and dried fruits to alleviate the effects. These guidelines were given because it's believed that those who have Senpaku eyes are more likely to get sick and suffer fatal accidents. It's crazy how... Such as assassinations from a second gunman <laughs> on the grassy knoll. The, the looks <laughs> can also indicate signs of psych- psychopathy. The fact that the person has the iris touching one end, leaving the other part wider, does not mean that they are cursed, uh, that is a, a, or a psychopath, but it, is, it serves as a warning. So it's not guaranteed, but you better be careful. I'm curious what science has to say about has, has to say about. According this. to Brian Ashcroft, when a person ages or gets sick, the iris starts to rise and lower the part of the eye becomes more evident. It can be an indication of the person's physical or mental health. Okay, so there's different types, right? There's saku yin, which is the lower part. Saku, saku yin, uh, sepaku yin, is when the lower part of the eye, called the sclera, is most evident. The iris of the eye is glued to the top, leaving the bottom with white more visible. Uh, Beliefs show that people with this type of look show that the outside world presents some risk to them. These kinds of risks are some, these kinds of risks are some tragic death. This is a, uh, uh, a Japanese article that was uh, translated translated to English. John Lennon, who was murdered by a fan, spoke of the Sanpaku Ai in one of his songs. Uh, The song is called uh, Aisumasen. Uh, the artist died tragically, as did many other artists who had these eyes. Senpaku yin means outside world, which according to superstition, something bad can happen to that person. Now, you also have senpaku yang, which is the superior uh, part of the eye. So senpaku yang is when the upper part of the eye, the sclera, is most evident. Uh, when the upper part of the eyes is wider than the lower part, uh, uh, 
part concentrates the iris. It's so crazy how <laughs> at odds all of the stories that we talk about in the in the podcast could be because yeah. like the first story that we talked about where there were vagina chainsaws, yeah. we talked about how insane yeah. the medical field was years ago. Yeah. And then we come back to this story of this doctor and we're yeah. like taking it as like gospel. Like so, he said this stuff. Yeah, where these I'm people died. I'm these definitely not causes. taking this as gospel. Well, I don't know. It, it, so the reason I came across this because it's a big trend on TikTok and, and there's, there's a lot of worry about a certain celebrity out there who has impacted eyes and people are very oh, no. worried about it. Then, who is it? And then, well, and then, and then, and then you can talk like you believe this, but you can't believe that two identical twins had identical <laughs> test scores. Yeah. Like the, every story is just at odds with one another. Uh, one so example crazy. that applies to the case of the superior uh, Simpaku I is Charles Manson. I mean, everybody you know knows. Uh, he was an American criminal who became known for his murders and creating his sect called the Manson Family. Um, people with this look often suffer from some mental illness and psychopathic traits, including aggression, tendency to anger, or violent outbursts. Simpaku Yang means inner world. This person can end up harming others according to superstition. Looks can really help you identify if, a psycho uh, if someone's a psychopath, so be aware, of, uh, be aware on the look of, uh, for that. What is the look of a psychopath? Uh, if you have Simpaku like, Yang. I mean, I mean, it's yeah. just that. It's Simpaku Yang. You have Simpaku like similar Yang. Similar to... If Taylor, Taylor had like, Simpaku Yang, he's close, right? Dude, I'd be so. Is Yang, wait, is Yang above or below? Above. Okay. No, so yeah, several you celebrities and uh, you should watch after Yang. Just saying. Several yeah. celebrities with Simpaku eyes have died tragically. We have Marilyn Monroe, uh, Audrey Hepburn, Marilyn Monroe, and John F. Kennedy, and Audrey Hepburn, and um, uh, Princess Jim Diana. Morrison, um, and there were others. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, also James Dean, John Lennon. Okay. Are we not Kurt Cobain? Are we thinking that maybe the similarity that these people share is celebrity? <laughs> well, is maybe the unfortunate burden of sure. But think about all the people. They were all twenty seven. Think about all the same people, <laughs> same that gone. no one knows who ended up, you know, murdering a bunch of people and or got in a bad car accident. Wow. Yeah. Now, uh, this superstition, not even in Japan where it started, is usually taken seriously. In fact, those who have this characteristic in Japan are considered very kawaii, which is literally very cute. Um, also remembering that if you do have senpaku eyes, you must stare straight ahead to see if the iris fits perfectly in the eyes or not. So don't look up, don't look down, okay? And if you have senpaku eyes, don't give importance to these superstitions that make no sense. Have it as an individual characteristic of yours, and that makes you unique and more beautiful. I feel like you're reading me a fucking horoscope, dude. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's take a look at some celebrities that are still alive that have senpaku eyes. <laughs> All right now, everyone will be very oh, sad. Oh man, here. I love her. Uh, um, Who is that? That is uh, that's April. Uh, uh, April. Um, no, not April. Audrey Plaza. Audrey Plaza. Her name's April in uh, in the Parks Teenage Mutant Ninja. Oh. This is uh, Jeremy uh, Allen Weber, I believe, uh, the lead actor from uh, that that he from? hit new show, The Bear, the one that takes place in um, Cocaine the Bear the Kitchen. <laughs> not Cocaine Bear, no. Um, and he was also in Shameless. We have. I really hope that her that Anna yeah, Taylor Joy is she's your favorite. Paku does not die because um, she doesn't know this, but we are are destined to get married. Interesting. Um, and this is the big one, guys. This is the one that everyone's very worried about. Hold on, I know who this is. Who That's is Billie this? Eilish. <laughs> doesn't look like her. Just is it Billie Eilish? Eilish? Yeah, it is. Too, yeah, it's Billie Eilish. It's too. It's too, too hard to tell. <laughs> Uh, Billy, I love that you're uh, like, I know this, I know this. <laughs> like, well, because the biggest celebrity yeah. in fucking America. I've literally never heard a Billie Eilish song in my fucking life. But you actually have, and you don't know it. She's Billie Eilish is well, then, always my top what Spotify. What song? Somehow. Um, the fucking Blue Eyes one. That uh, the, uh, what? It's about it's about Simpaku Eyes. I think. You don't even know. Yeah. Wait, yeah. wait. And you know what? Wait. She always has blue hair, so Did, it was hard to spot. No, she's, no, she's, she's green. She it was hair. Hair. It used to be green, and then it was she black, had, and then she, it was. She blonde. goes through transitions. But um, <laughs> she's but, a young woman, Jared, changing every year. Jerry, I feel like you watch this. Do you watch the Vogue Billie Eilish interview each year? Yes, I do. Yeah, I just watched the one for this year. It's so it's good. so it's nice to see her. It's so heartwarming it is it's really amazing and it's like, really cool from like a social standpoint to see someone ch like you can see the change you yeah know? and then have them you know they about one of my crazy. proudest features you know that i haven't changed since i was a uh, late teenager oh yeah. yeah you know what they should do is they should do a version of that with uh with the uh american president when they like as they enter office and as they leave yeah i think you just see the barack obama did that did that with his hair 
they did a thing with his hair where they were like, let's watch Barack Obama's hair be more gray. black. <laughs> yeah. In the well, not only that, they, and then I, be fully white. Yeah, I think they also the, were his, they're doing that with his hair. like like crow's feet and his facial like stress. But because uh, you see the photos of the the two. I mean, do you think being president is that stressful? <laughs> if no, I mean, no, if you're no. if you're Donald Trump, probably not because you really don't. He care. didn't do anything. Guys, else. did you guys get yeah. a uh, Trump NFT? <laughs> oh my god. You guys get your hands on one of those? No, I didn't. I, didn't. I got the one with him in the cape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks really strong. Uh, I just, I just want to say though again, because I don't want to end that segment on Donald Trump, is that if somebody's listening, listening to this and they haven't watched don't the act Billie like Eilish, you're not a Trumper. if they haven't watched the Billy Eilish Vogue interviews, it's great. You should now, do it. here's the thing. I know that you guys aren't taking the same Packer thing very seriously, which is a shame. Um, if, you just love if one anything of the, Japanese if one of these, culture. You're if, just if one of these, yes, I do. If one of these celebrities dies, say in 2023, God forbid, and it can't be Anna or Billy. Well, if it is, it is. I mean, but it, but it's, it's not going to be Anna. Well, it'd be <laughs> it's Anna not. before it would be Billy. No, it will not be. But if let's say it is one of them, except for her, mm -hmm. um, Will it change your thoughts on Sam Paku eyes? No. No. <laughs> That's okay. Well, we'll see. What if they all got on a plane and died on the plane together? I'd say then. Then would you go, oh. I would be surprised that all of them would. I, I, yeah. Yeah, because like, don't be celebrities. Surprised. Don't celebrities. All got on a plane heading to Japan and it crashed? No, because I, I, yeah. I think celebrities. Then, then you'd have to. I think to. celebrities, they either. treat them, they, they like, they treat each other. Kind of like the president, like they don't they don't travel together because they're like we can't all we can't go. all yeah right. It's yeah. like when the president, like yeah. the president and vice yeah. president, never travel together. Right, right, right. So if the plane yeah. goes down, you well, it's just like over. also if if there's a group of people who die in 2023 and they all have brown hair, then I'm gonna start to be nervous about my right, yeah. life. Well, if you have Sam Paku eyes, but this makes me this let, re, this makes me want to this makes me want to watch Black Dynamite. And just be reminded of the, the the really funny through lines and similarities that they're finding in Black Dynamite. Yeah, right, and if yeah. nobody knows what I'm talking about, then you got to go and watch Black Dynamite and do yourself a favor and see that movie for, for the first time. Yeah, do yourself a favor also by uh, supporting the podcast. You can go to our Discord channel, which is uh, the link is in each episode show notes. So pop on over, have conversations with us. It's very fun. And uh, you can also support the podcast by leaving a rating or review on Apple Podcasts or on the Spotify mobile app. Um, and, uh, and again, just, you know, a little reminder, have a happy holidays folks. Um, especially to all you out there with Sen Paco Yang and Sen Paco Yin. And, uh, let us know if there, are those twins fucking faking it? <laughs> I think they are. They're not. <laughs> I don't actually, you know, I did before we started the recording. Brian, you, you and then after talking to you, Brian, I was like, you know what? Maybe no, yeah. you know what? I'm on, I side with the twins. Yeah. I think I'm still, I still think they cheated, but you definitely made me consider it much more heavily and i'm i'm not right I'm but nearly, they didn't cheat i'm not because, nearly as convicted but they didn't cheat because i'm not the, convicted the same way they weren't convicted right but also <laughs> by a court of law they didn't cheat yeah yeah right um so exactly. let us know and yeah. they're lawyers now and they're they're lawyers for defamation and if they hear this then we most certainly are saying <laughs> they did not cheat <laughs> because they didn't. That's right. Uh, Listen, girls, I believe you. Yeah. Uh, you can send us your thoughts on whether you think they cheated or not, and uh, we won't share it with the public, so you will not. Be unless you unless you write yourself. in and say that you also agree they didn't cheat, we'll be sharing that for the for the twenty twenty three. Yeah. Well, we won't expose you to any defamation suits. Uh, let us know. Letters at sickboypodcast dot com, and if you want to be a guest on the show, go to sickboypodcast dot com slash contact and fill out our guest form. And uh, a huge happy holidays to uh, everybody who made this show happen in 2022. Um, we love you all, including the people who listen, like you, to Jeff Lonis, our manager, to Rich O'Coin, who does the theme music, to Take Part, who does the theme music on Mondays, to Lauren Sankey for being here at the part, first part of this year. And I love Lauren. Yeah, Lauren, we miss you. It's on a sweet little vacation right now. That's right. It's like and uh, yeah, thanks, thanks everybody for allowing this show to continue on. Happy holidays, folks. Uh, we'll see you right before New Year's Eve. And uh, we, we hope you all have a really lovely, uh, lovely weekend coming up. Uh, that is it for this week. I'm Brian. I'm Taylor. And I'm Jeremy. And this is Sick Boy. Whoa!